I want to give you some examples to try to make this as real as I can. These are examples that come just from last year. In Stephenville, Texas, a recruiter, an NCO, recruiters who for so much of America are the face of our army. This recruiter had a party at his residence. At his party there was drinking and he raped a female private at his residence. One of his guests, a member of his band of brothers and sisters. Last year in Silver Spring, Maryland, a male sergeant and a female specialist attended a unit social function to serve alcohol. The specialist became intoxicated and incapacitated. The sergeant drove her to her residence and raped her there. Never leave a fallen comrade. In Fort Leonard Wood, a male specialist on separate occasions forced three young privates against the wall and groped them. And an army that says, mission first, soldier always. In Iraq, a male staff sergeant committed wrongful sexual conduct, indecent assault, and indecent acts against seven female victims in rank from private to first lieutenant. Seven victims. American soldier on American soldier, blue on blue. Every year, CID summarizes the crimes that they investigate for the command. They report this information throughout the command. A list, this one last year, rape, non-consensual sodomy, aggravated sexual assault, aggravated sexual conduct, abusive sexual conduct, wrongful sexual conduct, and decent assault. These crimes are what General Casey referred to recently when he said there is an enemy within. And these crimes are irredeemably incompatible with Army values and our way of life. Sexual assault is a crime everywhere, everywhere in America and around the world. But in the Army, it is that and more. It is an assault on the core values of every American soldier. Understand this crime is not a, just an Army problem. In fact, if the facts were known, it's probably less of a problem inside the Army than it is outside the Army. It's a societal problem. Experts believe it's the most pervasive and underreported crime in America. It's rampant on college campuses. It's a problem on your college campus, I can promise you it is. But the Army's different. We are a values-based organization. We are a values-driven institution. What, be, what society may be forced to tolerate in the Army, we cannot let stand. Our Army values set us apart from society. Set us apart from the culture on your campus. And because of Army values, we're going to solve this problem. And we are going to become the nation's model for sexual assault prevention. General Casey said recently, and I quote from him, respecting and protecting the dignity of others is the cornerstone of our institution. In preventing sexual assault and speaking out are the right thing to do. It's about leadership. It's about discipline. It's about building a band of brothers and sisters. They can truly rely on each other. American soldiers work together as a team. They fight as a band of brothers and sisters. They're bound by Army values of duty and loyalty, by selfless commitment to each other that outsiders find incomprehensible. A willingness to sacrifice or even die for each other, if that's what it calls for. And that commitment runs to anybody that wears a uniform. In Iraq, that selfless commitment, that bond, led a 19-year-old soldier named Ross McGinnis to cover a grenade with his body to save the lives of his fellow soldiers. 19 years old. That's the age of many of the soldiers that you will leave. He was a regular kid until he put on the uniform of the United States Army. In Afghanistan, that bond led 19-year-old medic TFC Monica Brown a Texan, to throw her body on top of wounded soldiers to protect them from mortar and small arms fire, and provide them life-saving medical care as shrapnel and bullets rained down around her and the soldiers she was protecting in the middle of an enemy ambush. She received a Silver Star for her heroism. The Silver Star citation repeats three separate times because they fell under attack three separate times. She used her body to shield the bodies from the trap of those she was protecting. PFC McGinnis gave his life, and PFC Brown offered her life for their band of brothers and sisters. It's in this context that we must consider the crime of sexual assault. 
and ask ourselves, how can that crime coexist in our army with the values that shape the decisions, shape the actions of Ross McGinnis and Monica Brown? It has no place. Since 9-11, nearly 100,000 women have served in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Kuwait. 130 women have received awards for valor, including two silver stars. I mentioned Monica Brown, Staff Sergeant Leanne Hester received the other. 165 have received Purple Hearts. 49 women have been killed. 535 have been wounded. It is in this context that we will attack the crime of sexual assault and the enabling offense of sexual harassment and affirm the duty of every soldier, in fact, demand that every soldier intervene to protect their comrades, their brothers and sisters, from the threat of sexual assault. The impact of the crime of sexual assault extends well beyond the tragedy suffered by the individual victim. Our Army suffers collateral damage. Unit cohesion is destroyed. The life and death mission of our Army is potentially corrupted and compromised. A soldier can never be a member of a band of brothers and sisters if she's constantly looking over her shoulder. The lack of trust shreds unit cohesion. It tears at the very fabric of our service what it means to be a soldier. And we talk of this crime most often in terms of male on female. In the Army, 12% of our sexual assaults are against the male soldiers. From the moment an assault occurs, the casualty count begins to mount, impacting not just the victim and the perpetrator, but potentially every soldier in the unit. A unit begins to polarize, even atomize, after the soldiers discover what happened. He says this, she says that, some side with the victims, some side with the accused. Rumors fly, accusations follow, unit integrity and cohesion begin to unravel. It can take months to investigate the crime. Time never heals the betrayal and the loss of trust. A version of this story has played itself out across our Army since 9-11, close to probably 10,000 times. And let's put a human face on the first tragedy to better understand the impact and what it does to those who are victims of this crime. And these are quotes from actual soldiers. This is what they have said about what happened to them in the aftermath of their, this crime against them. One said, he was a doctor, he was a surgeon. They're gonna believe him, they're gonna believe me. 